John Capobianco is a senior partner with Fleischmann Hillard High Road. And it's a big company with really smart people in it, and he's smart, but he's also here because he's a conservative. And I want to put the question to you. All I'm hearing about this leadership is how it's dividing the party. There are the populists and the non-populists. There is the West and the non-West, or the East. And there are the urban people and the non-urban, the rural people. Why is your party always fighting with itself like this and dividing itself? Well, when your party's a Big Ten party like ours, you're going to get some divisions. You're going to get some people jostling with each other. Yeah, but a Big Ten party, they're all supposed to be in the tent. What's happening is that they're not. Yes, but you've been to parties when there's a Big Ten and there's people that disagree with other folks. And I think this is no different. But I think what what we've seen is we've got social conservatives in the party. We've got fiscal conservatives in the party. We've got populists. We've got those who who are set in the East and set in the West. So there's a lot of divisions, a lot of thoughts and opinions that people have. The, 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 what the, the next leader's got to do, he or she, is to uh, unite that. And I think that's the most important role for this. And, and, and in leadership you, contests... How do you unite that, though? But in leadership contests, Stephen, you're going to see that every candidate's going to have their lane. They're going to go after their base or who they think their base is. With Pierre Polovev, we've seen a certain, a certain pitch that he's got with some, yeah. certain members, which seems to be quite successful. Jean Charest, playing the whole issue of winability, the fact that he was, he's the only one that's won a, a race as, as Premier of Quebec. Yeah. And you've got Patrick Brown, who's like, hey, I'm a doer. I can bring multiculturalism back. Each of them have their own lane. And I think it's going to be important that once they win the leadership, how they unite the party is going to be the next step. Well, that, is, that was my next question, is that whoever is leader after September, I mean, they have to bring, as you point out, all these disparate parts. Yeah. together under the big tent. Well, and that's, Paul Rooney did it. And that's job one, right? And at the it end is. of the day, I was part of the Canadian Alliance when they actually, when, when the parties had to merge. So I yes. know what it is to have divided parties and we never win. So we have to learn from history and I suspect whoever wins this leadership contest will learn and understand that what happened then can't happen again, which is to say we can't have a divided party and we won't win again. Trudeau will keep winning. Well, as Peter McKay said after the last election, the Conservative Party, you know, missed an empty net yeah. lost the election. Yeah, I, I mean, that's pretty yeah, devastating, I, but it's actually true. Uh, I think you might regret that comment. But you know what? There was a situation where a lot of people thought that Andrew Scheer at the time should have won that campaign. There was a right. lot of stuff that happened on the Liberal campaign that would have given us the Ooh. wind in our sails that we should have. And that's the fact why that it was we an open net. I know. And then Aaron O'Toole, quite frankly, who I thought was a great leader and should have won as well, didn't win. And I think that's why we're in this position of soul searching for the party. What do we want to stand for? And who's going to be their leader that's going to put us in a position where we can actually win the next election? Well, it is because the party has to keep the eye on the ball and say, not only are we looking for the right leader, but we want to win the election. Right. It's no big prize to be the leader of the Conservative Party unless you can win the election. Yeah, well, that's the key thing. And I think that's what we're all hoping for. And we all expect the fact that the next leader will become the prime minister. Suspect or hope? Or both? Hope, both. <laughs> John Capabianco. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Three minutes. I read the comments that you leave after every show, and I get it. A number of you don't like my glasses. But a number of you saying, when we're asking for money, well, how much money does he need? I do not get a penny for doing this show. I do this show because I believe there has to be an outlet for discussion, analysis, news. Trudeau's sent me a $700,000 kitchen, and I wouldn't be there in the mainstream news. I'm asking for money because these guys behind the camera, the crew, they need to get paid to do their job. So help us. Press subscribe, press PayPal.